Game on. Hello, Mr. Blake Fly. What's up, Dan? I, I am good. I am good. Thank you for jumping on today, being part of this experiment, which you helped initiate, and you are now on the final call for. So this was full unintentionally circle. full circle. So thank you for completing the circle. Um, tell me about uh, who you are and what's exciting you right now. Woo! Who I am. My name is Blake Fly. My name's actually Blake Flyshacker, but my family's always gone as just the Fly family for a nickname. What's exciting me right now is being creative, optimistic, and agile. Mm -hmm. Because depending on the time in which you are listening to this conversation, <laughs> I believe the world right now just needs some people who are creative, optimistic, and agile. Because the rule book has been thrown out recently for people's personal and professional lives. And I think it's a terrifying and liberating opportunity. So what's most exciting to me right now is just playing around with how I can contribute to the lives and businesses of people in my world. That's me at this time in history. And what does that look like for you? Or what has it looked well, like over the past couple of weeks? Well, as an example, one of the biggest parts of my business has, has been as a professional speaker traveling around giving speeches that's gone right now and that's actually okay because i always kind of said i'd love to do work that doesn't rely on traveling for speeches mm -hmm. so this was a bit of a like oh, okay <laughs> sure, sure. Um, challenge accepted yeah. but i was kind of heading in the direction of let's not rely on that as a way to reach people as a way to do business as a way to feed the family yet right now I'm really exploring more of the work that I've been doing, just building community virtually, building community yeah. online. I've been doing that for a few years, kind of in three different ways. Way number one is uh, my business partner, Dave, and I, we work with kids in schools with a program called My Life Online, teaching kids to be safe, smart, and kind online. Schools currently are on pause, and so what that's invited us to do is we do a lot of virtual work with parents and teachers and kids, but it's kind of like a side thing. Now we've made that our, our main thing. And so oh. currently we're leading a daily virtual workshop series for kids and families while they're stuck at home. Mm. And we don't know what it will lead to in terms of revenue, maybe nothing, but we're just showing up mm -hmm. so consistently. And kids from around the world, they just tune in once a day and we cover topics that are relevant to them right now as they navigate this shape-shifting time in life. And then the other world that I spend a lot of time in is with folks like us, just the entrepreneur, creative artist, business folk in the world. And I love leading co-working experiences online because a lot of us work from home alone. And I love putting people on teams together so we can work side by side, be more focused, more structured, and just get a lot more done mm -hmm. in less time. So both these things I've been doing for a few years. And now they're like front and center. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it will lead to in terms of work and business, but I love showing up and I kind of just am detached from the outcome, but inspired by the consistent action that I see others take and that I'm currently taking. So, yeah. Yeah. And what, and what is keeping you taking the consistent action? Straight up, just accountability. Mm. Like I'm not really taking any action without someone else mm. so in the work i do with kids schools and families i have my teammate dave and we're each other's champions mm -hmm. in the work i do with entrepreneurs i basically just committed to a very rigid schedule and i said i will be here at these hours on these days meet me online so i have to show up even if people don't i said i would so i'm accountable to whoever may enter mm -hmm. and then I'm just accountable to my calendar in the sense that right now I'm solo just on my own for 14 days based on some health stuff. And I've just loaded my calendar with commitments, phone, video, virtual events. I'm basically kind of going like 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. straight every day, not to be some workaholic, but just to decimate opportunities for distraction. Yeah. Yeah. That's a huge part of it, especially uh, when you're, if you're isolated or not, but working on your own to fill your calendar and, and treat with respect. 
Um, yeah. So why, and why those two areas, the, the kids and, and, and entrepreneurs? Basically, I just, I love building things that I know I need mm -hmm. because I can trust that if I need it, someone else might. <laughs> that's, that's my logic. If I need it, someone else might. That's mm -hmm. my theory. And so I know that my wife and I down the road, we'd like to have kids. And so if I had kids right now, I'd want to create something or I'd want to have access to something that just helped them navigate life online. And even as a parent, how to navigate that with kids of our own. So building that because future Blake will benefit from that. And so will his family. And then the work with entrepreneurs. I mean, that's just my day-to-day -day life right now. It's, I'd rather work with others than work alone. And so I build things that make that possible for me and for other people at the same time. So it all kind of comes back to relationships and community and just helping people be accountable to the things they say they want to do. But if left to themselves, maybe they won't do it as well. And what are, what are a couple of things that have come up? Uh, so with anyone that has young kids or people, kids who are accessing the internet for the first time, what are a couple of things that you would tell uh, the parents to think about or I guess or the kids if you're talking to kids directly yeah mm -hmm. I mean one of the main things that we say especially to parents is they often ask us when is it okay to get my kid a phone mm -hmm. and we kind of swap out that question and replace it with instead of asking when do I get my kid a phone it's more how do you get your kid a phone because you know, some nine-year-olds are at the maturity level of a 13-year-old and some 13-year-olds are at the maturity level of a nine-year-old. And really we just say, well, it's not when you introduce your kid to their first phone, it's how do you introduce them to their first phone? And we kind of view it as the work we do is like driver's ed for a child's first phone. So just what's, what's the ramp you're putting kids on before they get the superpowers of a cell phone that they can call their own. And that really makes parents go, oh, didn't necessarily think of it that way. Replacing the when with how to give a kid their first phone. And then also a main thing that we share to everybody is this idea that everything you do online, it impacts others and yourself. So we kind of give people this mantra of it's not a screen, it's a human being. Because it's super easy for you and I, if we're not engaged right now, like we might just be passively, maybe we're stressed out. We can like just get upset with someone online. Even if like, maybe even if we know them, they're like a family member or a friend and we'll just be like, ah, what are you doing? And just put something that we regret later. Whereas if we remind ourselves, these aren't just screens, these are human beings. This impacts their life, their emotions, their fears, their anxieties, their hopes, their dreams, their goals. It just gives people pause to, to think about impact of every post before they press the button to make every post amazing and what would you say you most need help with right now what i need most help with right now is being equal parts realistic and optimistic and not to, swear, not to swerve too far to either side. If I'm super realistic, especially in these times, it's just kind of scary. <laughs> Whereas if it's super optimistic, it's almost immature. Mm -hmm. so what I need the most help with right now is that blended yeah. balance of realism, optimism, kumbaya. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Blake. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I just would oh, love Oh, and gratitude. I think you had a note about gratitude too. I, sorry, I'll let you ask that. And uh, Well, I'll, I mean, gratitude. I just, I just think gratitude is cool. Yes. I'll, I'll weave gratitude into this okay. because I'm grateful for the fact that I get to apparently be like one of the closers in this yeah. cool experiment for you. So I'd love to kind of turn the tables for a minute and ask, what is the biggest lesson you've learned from this interview experiment and what are you most grateful for having taken yes. action on it? Yes. Oh, this is perfect. Um, what have I most learned and what am I most grateful for? Yeah. I think the thing that I've learned is 
my identity has shifted a little bit around this. Like I used to kind of have this thing where um, it's, and it's similar to your note on, on consistently and showing up to where it's like, this is like, I'm not a real host or like, this is just on zoom. And then this isn't like a pro thing. So it's because I have done this every day and shown up and done it. And I don't even really, it's like same with you, like letting go of, I don't care if it's really good. I don't really care if people watch it, but because I made the decision to do this on a daily basis, I now relate to myself as a professional in the mm. sense that not that I'm getting paid for this specifically, but in the sense that professionals do things even when they don't feel like it. <laughs> yeah. And so that feeling has really kind of embedded itself. And I feel like I, you know, I have this kind of higher regard for myself, uh, especially in terms of this kind of work. And in terms of gratitude, um, especially right now, I'm grateful that we have technology like this um, so we can connect with people across the world. And it's funny that this kind of has started like as a video thing before the pandemic, you know, reached at the level that it's at now on, on March 23rd. Um, so it's just kind of made me stop to think how fortunate we are to be able to still connect with each other and communicate with people and form online communities through video, which is something that I'm passionate about anyway. So yeah, uh, yeah, I relate to a lot of what you're going through as well, because this is this is the kind of the world that I that I like and I want to get into. And I don't know mm -hmm. um, where, where it'll turn next, but I'm continuing to focus on um, helping purpose driven entrepreneurs share their solutions with the world. Mm. And, and thanks for being part of that. Let me know if you want to do, do another experiment. I get cool. very inspired by you and how you roll. So thank you for thanks, inviting man, you me. You too. This has been amazing. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Blake. Bye now. Later, Dan.